I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos, where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Alexander D. Jarvis. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm doing fantastic, Angel. How are you doing? I'm excellent, my friend. Good pleasure to connect with you. Uh, please do tell us what part of the world are you in right now? Well, I'm normally a little bit nomadic, but I'm currently in a cold, dank, lovely Ireland. Oh, the fun. Ooh, well, we do have that email saved in draft if you need it, which is filled with Caribbean sunshine that I can press yeah. send. <laughs> Definitely, Definitely get that to you. Uh, well, Alexander, do tell us, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? Um, well, in your words, uh, it was my intelligence, but um, I think that's probably a bit of a misnomer. Um, I think what the real contributing factor to this is like a lifelong commitment to learning just all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and suddenly the biggest thing I've realized over you know, nerding out for years is that there's not a tomorrow. Um, if you've got some really interesting research report on SaaS or your industry that you want to learn about, you think, do you know what, I'll file that in my documents folder and I'll read it tomorrow. But if you're busy today, you're going to be just as busy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you have to like make that break and just skim it, you know, like try and absorb the key learnings you can every single day and just like keep getting better. Yeah, that's amazing that in the first line that you're bringing all that value. I guess you have learned, or possibly you are intelligent, but I'll leave that right there. <laughs> <laughs> so who did you learn this, this skill from, this skill of um, understanding the value in learning? Um, that really started when I was working in mergers and acquisitions when I first graduated from university. I was doing an incredibly complicated topic, uh, financial institutions M&A, so selling life insurance companies, asset management companies, hedge funds. And, you know, they just set you crazy tasks and you somehow just had to figure it out. Hmm. And I, you know, I learned quite a lot what I needed to learn at the point I needed to learn, but I wasn't doing any more to kind of get better and keep leveling myself up. And to be honest, I really think it was actually once I'd left investment banking reflected on my experience of how hard, I mean, I was working like 20 hours a day sometimes hmm. for quite a lot of the times, but you know, there was so much I didn't know. And so, you know, I kept on getting access to a lot more information, realizing if I want to consume this, I just have to do it now. Cause you, you might get something great. You think, um, I want to set aside some really perfect time and like really consume this perfectly, but that time never happened. So if you just bust it out and you just get through it or, you know, you organize a call with someone and just ask the, ask the questions, you can just continually just um, start absorbing information. But it's just this realization that nothing is ever perfect. Life isn't perfect. What what does matter is that, you know, you can keep adapting to it. But that's that's like a commitment to yourself. Mm -hmm. Why will you continue to do that? Knowledge is power, man. I mean, there's that awful guy, Ty Lopez, right? I mean, he doesn't like, you know, awful guy. Okay, he's an amazing marketer. I mean, question if, you know, what he's teaching is valuable or not, but he's definitely a fantastic marketer. Uh, but he talks about knowledge, you know, and he, in his videos, he's got you know, this library of books, but he's actually right. But you need to get that knowledge, you know, in your head. Uh, Nassim Taleb, uh, who wrote The Black Swan, um, in this book, he talks about um, Umberto Eco. He's a fantastic writer. Um, and see, he, he makes this dark to me between people who, uh, would walk into his library and say, Oh, Senor, um, echo, look at this library. How many books have you read? And this very small percentage of people who look at the library and ask them the question, how many books have you not read? Hmm. But, you know, him having access to that information is the potential for him to improve that, that information he can reference and resource depending on what he's looking at. And, and so it's like, it's, it's a different paradigm of thinking about, you know, how you think about information. Where's the best place to follow your path, my friend? It sounds intriguing. To follow my path? Um, so I spend an inordinate amount of time blogging, actually. So I've got a, a blog called alexanderjarvis.com. It's very focused on raising money and scaling a company. 
Um, it's particularly focused on these topics because this is just what people keep on asking me about. And so I'll be really frank and honest and say a lot of the things that I wrote about, I knew nothing about when I wrote them. So I actually set out and wrote quite a lot of blogs or made financial models or made cap tables or ESOP models because I didn't have a clue. And it was through that process of doing, like sitting down and saying like, okay, if I had explained to someone else, how would I do that? And so I would go out, I would research and I would structure it and think like how I could explain to someone else. So my blog really is actually probably a manifestation of my own learning journey, which I'm then sharing with people. It just looks like, or I pretend like I actually know what I'm talking about, but the, the biggest, the most important thing, like if you're kicking out a startup is once you reach the point that you know, you don't know, you don't know, you're on a really good path. The problem is, is when you've got a little bit of information and you think, do you know what? I know it all. And trust me, you don't. Hmm. You'll freak out more you learn. It just gets more and more scary. It's like a bottomless pit, isn't it? It's ab absolutely, like seriously. Hmm. Well, tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, Alexander. Network. How does that make you feel? Ab absolutely. Like networking is absolutely so critical and it's so tied to this this learning so let's say you were in a queue to you know get a ticket for the train and bill gates was standing behind you and he was like that one hot ticket like the big opportunity you wanted you know you open your mouth and you need to say something right you need to be able to engage him mm. so all that work you did all that research all that learning puts you in that place where you can capitalize on opportunities and so do you know what you can spam people on linkedin all you like <laughs> But if you've got nothing to say, you're not going to get any engagement with people. You're just filling a library of pointless people who don't care or like you. But when you're actually able to add value, you're able to talk about different topics, that's suddenly when your network is going to really pop. Now, doing networking properly is a lot of work, but it's so worth it. And it adds up over time. And I think the most important one thing, if I was to say about how to do networking efficiently, is to just have a sincere interest in people. And that's the learning I got from uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win, in, uh, win Friends and Influence People. Mm. Um, just don't think about taking value. Think about like, how you can help people. Like, what is, you know, empathize with that person. How can you actually help them? And you know, the world will pay you back. But you, just, you need to care about people first. I love it. Amazing audience. You're hearing it live here from Alexander Jarvis. So they, again, you can follow his path, if I like to say, uh, via, via his uh, blog at alexanderjarvis.com. Alexander, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean <laughs> water. Alexander, what is your earliest childhood memory? <laughs> okay, um, this is going to sound really weird. Um, I can remember living in Indonesia. So I grew up in Indonesia in Jakarta. Fantastic place. I was living in this place called Rampopamai, and I can remember boxing up my toys. And my mother came in and was like, Alex, what are you doing with your toys? I said, I'm going to organize a shop and I'm going to sell my toys. <laughs> She's like, whatever would you want to sell your toys for? I said, I want to make money. So why do you want to do that? I don't know. I just want money. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Why do you think this memory is so clear? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just a, a function of what you reflect on. I mean, so maybe I've been on panels or something where people ask you about your first entrepreneurial endeavors. Um, and so maybe that might have been one of them that I was reflecting on back. Um, I mean, the, I guess my first real entrepreneurial endeavor was renting pencils in school. So, you know, <laughs> you get in trouble if you didn't have a pencil. So I was like, well, why don't I bring some extra ones and I'll get some candy if um, people can, you know, rent a pencil off me so they don't get in trouble with teacher. How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? You know, I went down the path, which I probably shouldn't have done, at least when I graduated university, of going to M&A. I'd never had an entrepreneurial role model, but I was always entrepreneurial. And the person I looked up to the most was my uncle Ian, who was in M&A. And, you know, he would pick me up from boarding school in England in his drop top BMW with some hot Swedish girl of the month. And I was like, that guy is so cool. And... You know, not having had a mentor or someone to kind of look up to back then, this is also pre-internet, right? Um, I guess you kind of want to latch onto something. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, I, I think maybe I ended up on, on the same track anyway, but 
um, you know, who you decide you want to emulate can kind of have a large impact on your life. And I guess for me, it was, you know, my uncle, who's an amazing guy. Um, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Sure. I love the idea of the child that is willing to do the thing that he has noticed is the thing and be willing to learn thereafter, understanding that the focus is the thing. And I'm saying the thing in this particular scenario is you deciding that, hey, I want to get money. Uh, I am an entrepreneur uh, in, in the smallest form right there, right? I'm going to sell my things. Sure. And it's intriguing to see who you've become where even where you express with your blog, right? Like you've done it. Like you, you, you just throw yourself out there and then do the reverse engineering, if you would. So it's just intriguing to see that thread uh, be consistent and constant in your life. <laughs> I can tell you, during my first uh, internship, I, um, no, it was my second, actually. My first one was in a hedge fund. My second one, I was, you know, like some poxy little intern, like no one cares about. And the associate directors joked to me, you know what, you should just skip and jump and just become an MD and like, you know, go get clients and do deals. Uh, which, you know what, like even when I was trying to get on that path of like <laughs> myself in the box of being a banker, you know, they could already see my personality was that I just want to hustle and do stuff and not try and fit within the boxes that the world was trying to put me in. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is you can only do when you're on boss or, you know, you're trying to create things. Mm -hmm. Amazing. If we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Yeah, 12. Uh, hmm. I think that was still Guns N' Roses time. So I'm about, oh God, how old am I? I'm about 35 now. So I think that was still Red Hot Chili Peppers and Guns N' Roses time. Yeah, yeah. I can remember lying in bed one night listening to, I think, Use Your Illusions 2 and thinking, I can never, ever imagine a time when I'm not going to love Guns N' Roses. <laughs> I just thought they were so amazing. Actual folks. Oh yeah. God! If you had more time, I'll tell you a story of how I got in trouble by using extra rows. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah that's, that's the, you know, that's, do that that's next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Alexander, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Sure. Alexander, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? A lot of people. Are you married? I, um, oh, sorry. I, I'm really open with mentoring everyone. You know, you can reach out to me uh, at alexander at 50 polscom And if you've got questions, we'll have happy to help. If you go to my blog, I've got a little pop-up thing. And you can um, just message me. If I'm not there, then I've got um, someone else who can, can chat with you. But yeah, I'm, I'm really open to helping people all the time. Are you married? Oh, God, no. I've got Do too much to achieve. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have children? No. Do you Same question. Do you believe in God? I believe uh, that people achieve their own destinies. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Um, Lucy Define. I, of course, have got a core group of people, but, you know, uh, for me, it's quite a lot more intellectually based. I just love engaging with passionate people. And so probably I've got a slightly different opinion of that, especially since I've lived in 13 countries and I've got to keep making new friends. Mm -hmm. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? I don't ever sit down and watch TV. I've got too much ADHD for that. So mm -hmm. if I ever watch TV, I'll be making a financial model or talking to people and playing guitar at the same time. <laughs> you play guitar. Oh, that's amazing. Bass guitar or guitar guitar? Uh, classical guitar. Oh, uh, unfortunately, oh, my grand guitar. piano couldn't fit next to my laptop. Oh. <laughs> what about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh God, probably 16 hours a day. All right. Alexander, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Alexander Jarvis, what would you say that is? Simple. Um, it's something we came up when we uh, started Groupon in Australia, and it's don't think, just do. You know, like there's so much to do, you just need to do it. And if you kind of think about and try and make everything perfect, you never get everything that needs to be done done. Hmm, love it. Just like that child, just knowing that he needed to do by selling his things right uh just think just just don't think right just do alexander this has been a great <laughs> this has been a great pleasure before you leave is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience 
You know, like I guess it's simple. I mean, with a startup, you have to have an amazing amount of commitment and compassion to build something. But when smart people tell you it's a stupid idea, it might actually be a stupid idea. There's too many people building businesses which don't have a real business model. And, you know, raising money from venture capitalists is not a real business model. So if you're going to commit up to seven, ten years of your life, do something which really has a future and makes sense. Mm, love it. Alexander Jarvis, this was a great pleasure. Thank you, my friend, for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.